Exactly. I'm going to introduce Richard. Richard's our local uh, pioneer person here. And Blake is our general manager for ah. Pioneer. And uh, we've got a lot of changes going on with the cellular uh, side of the business. And he's going to visit with us today. He's going to have a bit with us. Blake? All right. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, Tim, for the invitation. I do have a few things that actually it's brand new. Just found out some things this morning. So this is you're you're seeing it first on all about Hennessy. So this yeah, <laughs> this is. Um, but before I get to that, I want to just talk a little bit about who I am. I'm really not from around here, so not a whole lot of people know who I am. My, my wife and I are originally from Southwest Oklahoma, a big town called Frederick, big Frederick bombers. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, we grew up at, raised in, um, born and raised down there. I have uh, two children. One of them, uh, she's 28. She actually works at the uh, Heart Hospital off Memorial, cardiovascular sonographer. Son-in-law is a teacher in Dibble. I've got two granddaughters. Uh, one's four, one's two. I just went to see her play t-ball Monday. It was awesome. It was <laughs> awesome. Um, and then my son's 23. He, uh, he lives in Norman, just found his passion, just started as a mechanic um, for CarMax down there in Norman. So that's who we are. Uh, as far as Pioneer's perspective, I started right out of high school on the construction crew in Frederick. Spent about three years doing that, transferred to um, Newcastle, was a combination technician there for about another three years. Um, there's a pattern there. <laughs> and then, then I transferred to Comanche and was the, the local manager in Comanche uh, down there for about six years and um, managed the, the Comanche, or Comanche, I did end up man managing Apache for about a year, but Comanche, uh, Hastings, Loco, Temple, and yes, uh, has anybody ever heard of Loco, town of Loco? It's actually a really cool place. I did not know that there was a town in Oklahoma called Loco. But we, uh, we lived there for about six years and then got the opportunity to transfer back to Newcastle to manage that office uh, in Newcastle. Um, and when, when I say manage, and Richard can attest to this, it's, it's really, you're still out and about uh, installing um, and, and troubleshooting the customers. Um, you just have to you know, hear from the customers and listen to them. So you get that, that privilege, right, Richard? Um, but we do have some great customers, so that's, uh, that was not a problem at all. But, um, Spent about another six or seven years in, uh, in Newcastle. And then I transferred to, um, took the department manager's position over our engineering department in Kingfisher. Um, I was in that role for about two years. Um, and then I transferred over to uh, division manager of marketing, sales, and service. So I was division manager of the marketing team, uh, the offices out here, uh, as well as um, some of the, our care center folks. That was about six or seven years until about a year ago. Um, uh, got chosen to be the general manager. I'm really humbled to have that opportunity. Um, I'm actually getting familiar with Northwest Oklahoma. I spent all my career in Southwest Oklahoma, but there's some beautiful areas up here in Northwest Oklahoma, so that's, that's something that's really cool. We, we live in uh, Kingfisher now. Throughout all that six and seven years as division manager and my engineering, I drove back and forth. My kids, or my son was still in high school at the time, and um, we moved them, you know, three times when they were growing up, and I didn't want to do that to them in the high school. So I drove for about six, six and a half years from Newcastle, Newcastle Blanchard. My kids actually went to Blanchard School um, up to Kingfisher to, to work. And so, but anyway, um, that's enough about me. Um, any questions real quick before I get started? I'm going to get a drink of iced tea. Usually it's Dr. Pepper. Okay, so <clears throat> we did... As you know, uh, a couple of months ago, we had to make a very difficult decision. Um, and it, it, was, it was tough. It hurt, um, quite frankly. But I think, um, and this is a plug here, I think if you come to our annual meeting next Tuesday, May 2nd, um, you'll see why. We're going to show some financial projections and, and what that was doing and could do in the future to the cooperative, and we just couldn't let that happen. Um, Historically, we've always shown in our annual report our audited financials, so a lot of that is consolidated. You can't really see it this year because of um, this difficult situation um, we're going to show kind of why we had to make that decision. And I will tell you as well, Pioneer Cellular is a general partnership. 
Um, we have three other partners. Pioneer owns 58% of that entity, so we're the managing partner, but there's also three other partners. Um, Can Oakla Telephone out of Kansas and Oklahoma, obviously. SC Telecom out of Kansas, as well as Hinton Telephone in Hinton. So there is, there is three other partners. So this was a partnership decision to discontinue subscriber operations. Um, um, but it, it, it's difficult, um, but what I can say is we're here, we're gonna be here uh, through the transition to help it make uh, as painless as possible, I believe is what um, the term we're using. But I wanna go through some of that, that information of how we're gonna be here for um, the town of Hennessy as well as the communities around. So with that, I'll get started here. Uh, I've got four topics there. I've already wasted enough time, so I won't go through that. This, what all of our updates, and there'll be an update that comes out next week um, on this is well, all of our updates are gonna be on gopioneer.com. So like, I know last week or whenever we made the decision or the announcement about the five locations, that was probably text message and an email to forward you to our uh, website. And that's because there's a lot of information here. We can't put that in a text and we want you to keep referring to this as this updates. But what this is saying is the transition period begins in July um, and it will t last about 90 days. Uh, what, a, what, a, what I mean by transition period is starting in July, I know there was a question on the All About Hennessy post, Jack, I appreciate that. There was a question about um, can my number port over to Verizon? And the short answer is yes. The long answer is not yet. Um, we had, uh, you know, we're still affiliated with Verizon, but we had this agreement with Verizon. That's why Verizon is not in Northwest Oklahoma because Northwest Oklahoma was ours. You know, we worked on Verizon. That's why they did not have a presence in Northwest Oklahoma. Um, that could change after this, this um, through this transition, but Due to that fact, they did not have the ability to port out numbers to Verizon because that, that was our territory. So what we're going through is they're having to basically, um, without going into too much technical detail, get all those resources to where they can accept numbers from Hennessy. Um, we can't do that today, but that is something that will happen uh, starting in July. That's why we, this transition period doesn't start till July because we're not really ready to do that. Um, but I would encourage you, there's, there's five locations. I know you probably can't see that this on here, Jack, but there's five locations. So just go to gopioneer.com and you can see all this. Uh, there's five <laughs> locations here. One of those is going to be, um, the top one there is Canton. There'll be a location in Canton, Enid, Kingfisher, Weatherford, and Woodward. And, and what I mean by these, these locations is Verizon is gonna bring a team into our offices. They're calling it a store and store model. They're gonna bring a team into our offices to help tell you what kind of promotions they have going on. That's another slide here in a minute, but explain promotions they've got going on, what your plan is, what pl plan would be the best for you uh, in Verizon, as well as help you through that process. Um, so it's within our store. So you still come to our store, they'll probably have half of our store set up for them and then we'll still help you on the other side. But there's also going to be mobile locations, mobile I haven't seen it yet, I've just heard it. I think they're like these large RVs that'll come in and set up uh, close to our business offices. Um, not necessarily come in, but close to our business offices. Um, we don't have those locations just yet, but I, I would anticipate that Hennessy would be one of those locations. Um, and that, so that, but that won't necessarily be, the store and store is gonna be for pretty much a 90 day period. Uh, it'll conclude in September. Uh, the, the mobile units won't necessarily be a full 90 days. They may come in to, for example, Hennessy for a week uh, in the middle of August or something, or two weeks, or something like that. Um, they may go to um, you know, other parts of our areas, Sealing, for example, is another town that's a very large cellular customer. Um, that's, that's what will happen, and, and I'll show you the updates of how you're gonna know that um, on the next slide. So this is on our website, so if you, you go to that, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna show you. If you simply go to gopioneer.com and click this important message right here, this brings you to that slide I just showed you. So this is on our website live. So if you just scroll down, this is the transition locations. So this points out those five locations that we just talked about. And whenever we do have a schedule on the mobile units, there'll be like a little truck 
that'll come up over here. And I'll, for example, we'll put a truck in Hennessy when, we, when that's approved and announced. So this, this is where you can go and then you can also even click on these locations and the phone number's there. You can click on the phone number, it'll even call it for you. So that's um, just a little, little bit of information about where our locations are gonna be. Um, and now let me get into the rest of the presentation. Any questions there while I pause? I think this one's mine. Okay. I, I noticed you didn't put a location in Oklahoma City, but Verizon has one. Are they going to be able to know what's going on here if we wanted to go to Oklahoma City? If I would have read my notes, I would have said that. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> so that is accurate. So what we are, this is, this is our website that we put on there. What we have asked Verizon to do, and they're going to let us, is put a pin on here where their, their offices are. That may not make a, a whole lot of sense here in Hennessy, but for example, if you're in Weatherford, if you live out here, I know somebody personal in Hammond, Elk City, they have a store in Elk City. There's no sense in a Hammond customer coming to Weatherford when they can go to Elk City, a, a true Verizon store. Um, so that, that's a good, good point. That will be added to this. That's another enhancement that we talked about. So um, thank you for teeing that up, Jack. Okay, anything else on that one? Okay, I wanna to get to the promotional discounts and I'll, this is a big one. Um, this has been the most difficult question uh, that, that we've had to deal with customers that, that are porting out sooner than later. Um, if you purchased a phone, for example, in the last 18 months, and you got a promotional discount, let's say you got $500 off. With that promotional discount, there was a 24 month commitment on the promotional discount. So if you left before the 24 months, then basically that discount on that device you got was charged back to your account. Um, understanding the situation, um, if you poured out during the transition period and starting in July, that discount will be waived. Um, we won't hold that against you. We just ask for a little bit of patience until we can get all this figured out, the promotional period. So that is something that is huge for customers because we have, it's a, I've had conversations with customers myself, it's not fun. But that is, we will waive that, that promotional discount that you receive with your device. Um, but there is, no, there is no service commitment. There, I mean, you can disconnect your service um, at any time. It's just based on that promotional discount for a phone that you got when you purchased the phone. So that's one big question, and these are FAQs. If you also, if you went to our website, I won't go back for because of timing. If you scroll down, we have a list of I think it's up to 13 FAQs right now. Um, you can click on those, and it, this gives you that information right there. This this explains that whole example, uh, but I won't read the slide to you because that's a no-no. Um, then you'll go to sleep on me. So, um, but that's uh, that's one big thing that that we've had to deal with. Um, the next one was that, that question, I can't remember the lady's name that brought it up on, on um, All About Hennessy Post, but this answers that. Uh, yes, all of our numbers um, will be portable uh, during the transition period. They're saying 95% starting in July, but we may have one exchange, and, and I'm not sure what that exchange would be, may not be ready until August or something like that, but they're trying to get the bulk of our customers um, portable by July. Oh, and there's also today, if you was to port out, and this is a standard procedure, um, you would have to call and get a PIN number from our offices, calling it a PIN number to port out. Um, during the transition period, we're trying to make this as seamless as possible. We're gonna waive that process. You don't have to call and get a port number. Um, so that's another thing that we're trying to do to make this transition a little bit smoother. Now, during the transition, do they have to transition or over to Verizon, or is it open to anybody? Good question, Jack. You seem like you've heard some of this, this stuff before. <laughs> um, no, I mean, you, you can port out to any, any carrier. If you don't have a uh, commitment from your phone, a promotional discount commitment, and you wanna go to AT&T or T-Mobile or Cricket or whoever else, I mean, you can. Today, you still have the, the PIN number, but we're not saying you have to go to Verizon. That's not, that's not the point. The point, why we are, recommending Verizon is because they are still, we are still going to be operating the cellular network. They are going to be using the same network 
that you're using today. So if you're happy with your Pioneer Cellular coverage, then we would recommend going to Verizon because they're going to use that same network. Um, if you have, I mean, I have family down in southwest Oklahoma that Verizon really doesn't work real well down there. Um, I talked to him this morning. He went with uh, what straight talk from, from Walmart or something like that, and it works great for him. So it's not, we're not saying you have to go to Verizon. We just know in northwest Oklahoma, the network that you're using today is going to be used by Verizon. So if you're happy with that, then we would recommend Verizon. Um, so there's been a lot of questions about promotions. What, what kind of promotional activity am I, am I going to get from, from Verizon? And here's what we know. Today, I actually went on their website yesterday, you will be able to receive the national promotion because you would be considered a new customer for Verizon. And today you would get either a, an iPhone 14 Pro free with the 5G Unlimited plan or you can get a Samsung S23 and a $200 credit with the trade-in. Um, that's the promotion today. Um, in July, I don't know if it's going to be much different, but they've been pretty consistent of the promotions today. Um, so it's a really rich promotion that they have anyway. That's, that's one of the reasons why um, um, they're so successful. Um, so that is, uh, you would be available to get that, but Pioneer Cellular customers will be able to get a special promotion on top of that. They call it a stackable promotion. I don't know exactly what that's going to be. That's going to come out in mid-June. So you would be able to get whatever anybody else off the street can get plus another stackable promotion. So that's one other uh, reason we'd ask to wait for the transition period because I think you'll be happy with it once you uh, hear that additional promotion. Um, they also, that is, so let's say you did buy a phone a year ago. They do have offers to where you can bring your own device uh, into to Verizon and they would give you, I don't know, just some $500, $700 credit instead of giving you a free phone. So you, there is that option as well. I know they do that. Now, I'm sure AT&T and uh, T-Mobile and all the other carriers have similar promotions, but you won't get the special promotion, the stackable promotion with those carriers. So that's kind of why we're trying to um, also promote Verizon in this process. Will some of our phones be able to be, just work the way they are, like the same change or something? Most, if you've gotten a new phone in the last couple of years and they are Volte capable, I know that was a big push that we had last year. Most of them will be compatible with Verizon. Um, that's actually an FAQ on there. there. If you go to the Go Pioneer FAQ, click on that question, you can scroll down and there's actually a link you can click on that takes you to Verizon's website and you can check your phone model to see if it's compatible or not. And you're right, yes, it would, it would be a simple SIM change is all it is, that little SIM card. Change their network to ours. So I've spoken way too long, Tim, I know. Um, Yes, sir. So what if you've been living under a rock and you don't do anything? Does your phone just stop working in August or is that? Good question, Jack. Um, could, could I hear that or do I need yes, to repeat no, it? Okay. So um, what will happen if you do nothing is whenever the network shuts down, June, or probably later in September 31st or October 6th, whatever that date is, yes, your service would no longer work. So if, if I'm paying monthly for my cell phone on my cellular bill, how is that going to work if my phone's not paid off? Good question. Um, we do have an FAQ that goes into more details, but I want to answer it verbally with, for you because that's a great question. What we have is we have multiple options on that. We understand that. Uh, so we can transfer that um, installment payment over to if you have another service with us, broadband or whatever, you can transfer it over. Or if you don't, we can still transfer it over to what we're calling a miscellaneous receivable, and you would continue to get that bill for whatever, 25 bucks a month, whatever it is. So yeah, we're trying to make it easy and not just having, hey, you owe us $1,200, give me, I'll take cash right now. I'm no, just kidding, but <laughs> we're trying to make it easy um, for... Um, but will, will I have that option, say I go in during the transition period, well, they say you can roll it over or this is the balance if you want to write us a check right now and pay it off. Yes, sir. That is the exact answer. You could do that today as well. I mean, let's say you wanted to port to uh, AT&T today. Um, once that number gets ported, we get a disconnect on that and then that balance would, could either be billed back to you or it could be transferred to another miscellaneous account. So that's 
You can do that today if you'd like. Yes, sir. Are these promotional offers pretty much the same on business accounts too? Like, no, uh, business. That's a good question. I, I believe there is, there's going to be a. They call it Verizon Biz Team. I think. Uh, I actually got my wife works at the chamber in Kingfisher, and she actually called yesterday wanting to leave some business cards. Um, so th what they'll do is we're going to give them, we're going to share with them our business customers because we want the best products for you too, the best service, and they will contact you and say, okay, this is what, you have 23 lines with us, um, you know, this is what we can do for you. Okay. Those will be on an individual case-by-case -case basis. Good question, though. You're making it easy on me. <laughs> I have a business question. It doesn't have to do with the rollover of the cell phone. I'm just curious, is Verizon buying like your cell phone towers and all of that, or is that? That's a valid question. Today, all we're doing is we're discontinuing the cellular subscriber operations. So the towers and all that is still being owned by CNP, Piner Cellular, today, oh, okay. yeah. And they will continue to be owned by Piner Cellular. Oh, yes. So then will Verizon like pay you a fee to use those towers? Is that how that'll work? Correct. So, what is Pioneer's what is Pioneer's long-term thing? So, you've, you've taken a chunk of your business off. What are you going to use to replace that or grow the company? That is the right question. So, and we are again going to talk about this at the annual meeting. So, please come see us May second. Uh, you'll get a free cookbook, which is our 70th anniversary cookbook. But I'll answer that question there, but you're going to hear this first right now all about Hennessy. Um, you know, our plan, we, we saw the cellular industry, the wireless industry, is extremely competitive. And, and you'll see the financial statements that cause us to um, make that decision. But that is very valid. How are we going to maintain the cooperative? That is a, a huge chunk of who we were in the past, and it's been great to pioneer. But our focus is really on fiber. Um, I mean, if you, you can see, even the, the Oklahoma, broad, Oklahoma created a broadband office. We're trying to, we want to help the state of Oklahoma serve all of Western Oklahoma, all of Western Oklahoma, not just the cooperatives. So that's, that's going to be our vision. That's going to be our thought is how can we help the state go in places that, that's not served um, today. Um, so that's where also, if you look at, we, we, we call them competitive uh, CLEX, but we, we've also expanded outside of our cooperative footprint. We've went to Weatherford, Woodward, and Fairview, um, trying to build out to places that is growing, that is quite frankly profitable. So we can use that, those profits to subsidize building out to fiber to far rural parts of the cooperative that really wouldn't really make sense. I mean, it, there's locations out there that, that could take up to you know, eight hundred thousand dollars to get fiber to just them. You know, we're trying to get, make it to a point where we do we can sustain long term, but also serve the members that that we're owned by. Basically, uh, we just announced um, a few weeks ago, Cashin. Cashin is one of those areas. Major growth in Cashin. Um, so we we are working diligently. Uh, we're building mainline today um, to Cashin. That's another area. So it's growing, taking fiber. You know, we, we want to serve the membership first. That, that is our, that, that's why we were created. Um, and you'll hear a new a mission statement as well um, at the annual meeting. It sounds like I'm trying to give a plug for the annual meeting. Is that, is that okay? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that is, it's, it's growing, taking fiber outside of our territories that, that are profitable or if there are subsidies or if there's grants through the Oklahoma State Broadband Office to go to, for example, a Hitchcock or something, that's not in the cooperative territory, but we do surround it. So if there's places that the state of Oklahoma needs us to go, um, we're gonna be willing to do that. And that's why we're trying to position ourselves to do that because we know fiber is the future. And I'll kind of, a pre-speech here, um, but how? So. My biggest concern with this cooperative is that in 10 years, is broadband going to be the same thing that cellular is today? That's my biggest fear. And so what we are doing, we created a brand new department within Pioneer that focuses on innovation, 
development and transformation. And that's the sole purpose of that department is to continue looking forward. We believe fiber is the answer, but is it broadband in 10 years on fiber or is broadband gonna be so hyper competitive that that's really not something that's gonna keep us floating? And that's what that uh, department is gonna focus on is what's the new products and features that you can offer on, on fiber. Um, so that is something that's, that I don't want to go through this pain in 10 years. This, this is painful. And, and we're trying to make steps of looking in the future that we don't have to do that. So you work through the new broadband office that is formed by the state that Mike Sanders is head of. Yes, sir. You have a territory out in northwest Oklahoma that you want to serve with fiber. Does the state offer you a protective territory or is that just open game for everybody or so that's um executive director sanders yes um we have had conversations and, and the state does not have an exact plan there's 42 and a half billion dollars that the uh, iija came out with it's called the be program but they're giving the states and the states create a program of what qualifies you for those areas but there is you know there is a piece there they're not i mean broadband's it's not regulated, it's deregulated, so anybody can come in and provide broadband. Um, that's why you've seen some electric cooperatives do it as well. So that's, there's nothing that's like the old telephone regulated, this is my area. But what they're going to do with that funding is try to avoid duplicate funding. So if they're paying, let's say, uh, Pioneer Telephone to serve, um, I don't know, Hitchcock or whatever, then there's no other funding for Hitchcock. I mean. Somebody could come in and serve Hitchcock over the top of you, but there's not going to be duplicate funding. So it's not a designated territory, but there's not going to be duplication. Or there's not supposed to be duplication of funding. It's a tough business model without I would say. Right. Because you don't want to spend millions of dollars putting lines in out there, and then all of a sudden somebody else comes in. I mean, that's... Uh. And if you think about it from a business standpoint, those areas that are... There's high density, for lack of better terms. You know, those areas probably are considered served today, and, and there's not going to be funding to go in those areas. Like, for example, Cashin. There's not funding to go into Cashin. That's, you know, the cooperative's investment, um, looking for an ROI to help the cooperative out in the long term. So that's good, good stuff. They're getting harder. They're getting harder. I just know Tim's going to ask another hard question here in a minute. <laughs> Well, I hated to get off the trail of the cellular, but yeah. Just, yeah. But that's our, I mean, that is, that's our future. You know, we, we started out as a telephone company. They called it POTS, plain old telephone service, on copper lines or even open wire lines. And I remember yeah. when I started in Frederick, I was, we, that's right when Pioneer bought the GTE exchanges in Southwest, which was Hollis, Frederick, Sentinel. Well, I don't know if Sentinel, but Hollis, Frederick, Tipton. And in Hollis, we still had open wire, which I'm, most of you probably don't know what that is, but a shared line. And I remember wrecking out, basically climbing those poles and taking those insulators off. And um, so that's how we began, you know, and then it, it migrated to um, cellular came out in the 80s, uh, was, was a great product. Um, and then the internet came out in the early 2000s. And it's just evolution. It's just the evolution of the business. It's tough, um, but uh, I assure you our heart is in it for the cooperative. And, and, I remember the old bank phones. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> the, the, those were rock solid, weren't they? <laughs> I remember the Nokia phones that had that little snake game on it. Yeah, that was fun too. Yeah. All right, what happened that all of a sudden we had to do this? That is a hard question, Jack. You're not supposed to. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, this is something. It's not all yeah, yeah, this the right. This, this is the Pioneer Cellular decision. We've been working on this for three years. Working on it for three years. We tried multiple avenues. I mean, we we started with okay, we're not we're losing a whole lot of customers in cellular, so let's let's do what they're doing. Let's do these amazing promotions. Well, folks, those promotions cost a lot of money, a lot of money. And we weren't really moving the needle. We weren't really growing the subscriber base. We were doing better at retaining, um, 
but it, it was still a downward downward path. And if you looked at, you know, we do also uh, Verizon. Even in the past, we they roamed on us. They roamed on our towers, and so did Sprint. I'll give an example. So did Sprint. Well, when Sprint and T-Mobile merged about a year ago, we lost all of that money, all that money. Uh, I wish I could say what that was, but I'd probably get in trouble by our CFO, but it was substantial how much money that, that we lost from roaming for, just because of that merger. Um, and, you know, the, we also renegotiate rates with Verizon every year, and, and their, their usage on our network has gone down as well, and obviously our subscriber revenue has gone down. So it's been, and, and then as you know, um, expenses go up. I mean, it's natural. It's natural. Uh, maintenance cost, even land leases with towers and I mean all those expenses go up and when revenue is going down uh, the last three years um, we were also losing federal government money too there's there's money there that we've lost substantial so it was not a good path and, and unfortunately um, it's almost a pattern for tier three carriers um, you know Sheridan Valley bluegrass west central wireless in Texas I mean, this, the wireless industry is almost getting to the point where, um, you know, it's going to be left to the big three, big three. Because, I mean, you can say cricket, straight talk, but they're all a part of a big, a tier one carrier in the, back, in the background. It's just a prepaid service um, type application. So, unfortunately, that, we're, we're stuck in that, um, that trend, and we could not, um, no matter what we did the last three years, uh, really see if... We tried things, uh, tried to reduce expenses, tried to look at creative avenues, but when it came down to it, um, there wasn't a path forward. <clears throat> Link, I want to say that um, I'm thankful that you recognized this was a problem before it was a much bigger problem because Pioneer has a huge footprint in our county, in Hennessy, Kingfisher, and um, I'm very thankful that you made a very difficult decision to help move the company upward and forward. So thank you for that. Thank you. Any other questions for Lake? Any questions for Matt? Thank you. And again, May 2nd, see you Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>